you know, you talk about three hours to get as far sex as fun. But you can't tell, I'm, I'm actually starting to take this very seriously. Honestly, when I first started doing this, I thought I would just goof around with it, but now I'm really taking time to deliberate my decisions. <laughs> anyway, um, blaze rods. Probably one of the best fuels to use in furnaces when you've got super smelting and things, very handy. Uh, and then there's probably a bee. They're just not quite fast enough, generally. In fact, you know what, that's going down to a C. And also, potato needs to get out of B. I'd say potato is probably a D. No one gives potatoes to it. Glass tiers are just actually the most useful item in mining stuff, and glass farms can seem pretty big and, and scary projects. But they are some of the funniest things to watch and listen to in Minecraft, so it has to be a capital B. I mean, is it really even a question where this one's going to go? Wooden skeleton skull. If, if, if anything, if there's a category above this, then it would go up there. It's the coolest farm, especially when done on a crazy scale, like the one that this guy did. The gold farm, I would say, is a solid category A. The only reason that it can't be a category F is because the wither skeleton skull farm is also a gold farm, just on the side. Like it just it produces lots of gold just kind of casually and as if that's all it does. So this by default has to be better than that. Record farms were cool back in maybe 2013, but yeah, nobody listens to us in Minecraft anymore. Oh, I just got a message from Green saying that I said carrot. Okay, uh, okay, I'll, I'll leave it to category E. Iron farms. I mean, is that is that even really a question? It kind of is actually nowadays. 1.30 definitely an S for sure. 1.14, the furnace designs are a bit clunkier, they definitely cause a lot more lag, and they tend to produce a little bit less iron, so I would put them in category A. Well, farm, solid category, it's just, they're alright, nothing spectacular. Fully automatic TNT power cobblestone generator, on the other hand, definitely a category S. I mean, you get over 100,000 cobblestone per hour. <laughs> how, how could that not be a category S? Cobblestone is used in all the crafting recipes. Mushroom farm, Oh there. I've never built one, never needed to build one, I like them. Dorian farm is going to straddle between category S and category A. It's really good, it's cooler than all of these, but not quite as cool as all of these. If you're building with prisonry, no, it's the best farm ever. And you just get three building blocks, and you get XP, and food. And it's the only farm you need. AFK fish farms by the bottom, because they're super cheeky and I hate them. And I think I'm done, is mainly to the bottom now, I think I was a bit too harsh on certain things. And this is my fully finalised list. So, category S is obviously villager breeder, wither skeleton farm, automated cobblestone farm, wood farm, iron farm, and rich farm. No one's arguing with those. And then from that point forth, things gradually start to level up. Since the iron farm, 1.14 plus, just not quite as cool. We've got hostile mob farms, they're pretty handy to make some farms for you to trade in. We have down here sugarcane farm, which is fantastic to fly around. We've got bat farm because it's hilarious. Bamboo farm to power furnaces. Boots farm also to fly around if you don't have a pitch farm. Category C, melon farm. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. Not quite as good as pumpkin farm for trading and for food and crafting, but still good. Skeleton farm. If you don't have a hostile mob farm, then that's handy as well. Cactus farm, zero ticks. That's cool. Potato farm is not quite as good as a carrot farm. Heading further down, we've got zombie spawner because. Rotten flesh are terrible, but XP is handy in the early week for things like egg farms, tree spider farms, record farms. You know the drill, and then when we get down to the bottom, these are the worst of the worst. I mean, sometimes you have to build these things, sometimes you have to build these farms, but you hate every second of it because everyone knows that they're absolutely terrible. And also, if you build AFK fish farms, then you don't deserve to be here. Just you know. And on that note, I think it's time to end. I hope you enjoy it. We're going to catch you in the next video. See ya. Curiosity. Hmm, I need some time to take off. Moving swiftly on, when it comes to brewing things, you never just brew one potion. You realise it costs the same amount to brew one potion as it does to brew three? Always brew three, even if you need one.
Three, facing Redstone or Glass. Look, I get, I get it. Okay, sometimes, sometimes you're in a bit of a pinch, you run out of resources, and you just need to make things work. But please, do anything or anything will be in the game. I have it on everything. Apart from my bow. Okay, if you choose mending over infinity on a bow, who are you thinking? What are you thinking? To stay on the topic of enchantments, let's talk about pickaxes quickly. Fortune 3 is great, of course everyone needs a Fortune 3 pickaxe, but if your daily giant pickaxe has Fortune 3 instead of Silk Touch, that's an issue for me. But then on the flip side, if you use anything other than a Fortune 3 pickaxe when you go out Nether Tools mining, then you have me very confused, especially if you've got Mending, because then it's essentially free repairs for your tools. And on the topic of repairs for your tools, you should never repair them just using I know it may seem tempting, okay, you don't have to go out and sit the crafting bench and find some sticks to make a pickaxe, but look at this. I put three diamonds in, my pickaxe isn't even fully repaired, and it costs me three levels. Whereas if I put a brand new pickaxe in, all I've done is add two extra sticks, I get a fully repaired pickaxe, and it costs me less. Why would I not do this? Look, I feel a little bit underqualified here, I'm about to give some building advice. Trust me, it is good. If you're doing a build, and you run up to the edge of some blocks of the terrain here, Either extend your build downwards, or extend the landscape around it. Because otherwise, this just looks like it's going to fall down. Okay, you don't have to be an engine portal and put it into the right spot, because otherwise it could cause a mess, especially on multiplayer servers. I know I'm super forgetful, but this always really frustrates me. In fact, I think this might just be a tip for myself. Okay, when making the enchanted room, provide a small supply of lapis, because every single time, just as a side note on this one, if you're the unlucky person that discovers that a redstone contraption no longer works anymore, don't get angry at the person who made the redstone contraption. I get so many angry comments on five or six year old videos that are complaining that the contraption no longer works anymore, and it's up to my fault. And how did that work? And speaking of five or six year old things, clearing out your old worlds. This is something that in my opinion you should never do. And I regret doing it in the past, because there are so many worlds saved on those computers that unfortunately I now don't have access to that I wish I could see. Using hyper-realistic Minecraft texture packs. Now don't get me wrong, I think the artists have done an incredible job. They've created something very impressive, and there's a lot of skill involved here. I don't understand why you would want something like this. Look at that cactus. It's just, it's so high definition, and that is totally the opposite of what Minecraft is all about. Look at... Oh, it's just... Oh, it's, it winds me up. Crafting diamond hoes. <laughs> just kidding. I love those things. Oh, oh, video ending. Oh, that was abrupt. Um, oh, I don't even know what to say. Um, I think we're getting dark. I was, expect, I was expecting some kind of outro or some, something to tell me the video ended. I really like the idea of trying to build an entire base inside of one. Yeah, it would be tricky, especially considering how bold my plans are. So first things first, let's get this place cleared up a little bit, and then we can start trying to work out where each thing is actually going to go. Obviously most of this base is going to be underground. Well, with that being said, there's a few larger scale things that I want to have above the ground. For anyone who's seen the Hermitcraft series, you will probably recognise what I'm building right here. In Minecraft 1.14, there was a change made to TNT, which allowed it to drop every single item that it exposed. So it used to just blow things up and then you'd lose them. Now, with TNT, it blows things up and you get to keep the items, which means it's incredibly useful for automatic farms. And automatic farms, I mean, you know, they do not need wood. So let's just see if part one is working. If our tree grows, then TNT explodes, breaking the cobblestone, and all of the items just end up falling in the water. I've been running this for maybe 40 seconds, maybe a minute, and as you can see, we already have two stacks, which isn't bad considering I'm not really good at 